also had the Reliance AGM yesterday and of course there were lots of takeaways on uh, the geo business uh, with respect to geo air fiber and a whole host of other things, uh, the smartphone as well. Sanjay Kapoor, former CEO, Airtel and telecom industry expert and Nitin Soni, senior director, corporate ratings at Fitch Rating. Join us now uh, to talk about that. Gentlemen, morning to both of you. Uh, Sanjay, good seeing you after a while. Uh, let me first begin with you. What was your key takeaway from the, uh, you know, the AGM yesterday and what is the read through for the telecom sector? So, Sonia, good morning to viewers and all of you. Um, I think yesterday's uh, meeting is now consistently telling you that there are no price announcements anymore in the AGM. So, I think uh, Geo is very clearly wanting to retain their market leadership and now through differentiation with product offerings and technology to make customer experience better. I think that is what comes out as a thematic from what happened yesterday without the uh, pricing announcement. So they're not playing the pricing game anymore. Now, the sort of things that they announced yesterday <clears throat> are very obvious for a, a telecom provider and especially a leader in the market. So when you talk about, uh, uh, you know, the last mile connectivity uh, through 5G or, you know, wireless fiber or whatever name you want to give it, uh, it basically is saying that in a nation uh, where the fixed line penetration is exceedingly low, the last mile, which is very difficult to connect everywhere and not fungible either, will be connected through 5G, which is a very obvious choice. So fixed wireless access globally is a use case on 5G that operators are wanting to monetize when there is lack of real monetizable use cases on 5G. So the jury is still out on 5G as to how 5G investments will be monetized. But FWA is definitely one of those. And I think Reliance is wanting to chance that out to see in a country where fixed line penetration is very low, they must do it. The second thing okay. that they talked about was uh, immense use of AI. And AI mm. is, again, something which is very experimental at the moment. There are about 30, 40 applications that various operators are trying. I'm connected with many of them. Uh, things like computer vision, image processing, uh, basically chat GPDs, where uh, you know they are trying to build in use cases around content recommendation, customer care, there's speech to text uh, analytics for customer care that's happening. People are using uh, Google Knowledge Graph uh, for content evaluation, also outbound sales, et cetera. Uh, AI-based generation is there for sales management. And the unstructured data that sits on tweets and everything else, how do you make sense of those? So I think there are many experimentations going on. But really seeing what's there for the customer, I think for the customer uh, visibility, there's probably... Um, you know, the digital assistant that could become better and recommendations that could become better. But there are again, um, you know, challenges around customer privacy, data privacy, and all that mm. stuff. So I think this is again something where, you know, what will really take shape where customer stickiness will be created and monetization will happen is still not very well known. But I think sure. it is good market leader to experiment all permutations, combinations to see which are the winning ones. Oh, absolutely. And I don't, as you said, right, you started by saying that pricing is not their focus at the moment. Their focus is more growing the pie, growing the business. And in that context, they want to increase their presence in Geo to 200 million, double of their earlier target. And they are currently connected only to 10 million homes. So the reach, I guess, is uh, their focus area. Uh, Nitin Sony is also with us. Nitin, um, do you think this target of increasing their presence to 200 million, is it very ambitious according to you? And uh, we don't have too much clarity on pricing just yet. So how would you assess things going forward? Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. So firstly, uh, I, I should tell the viewers that which rates Reliance Industries at triple B flat uh, stable on foreign currency rating and triple B plus stable on the local currency. Now, we do believe that this geo air fiber will expand the uh, India's home broadband network and, and the market and it will accelerate the availability of uh, 5G fixed wireless access across across the country, as Sanjay was explaining. And a lot of the other telcos in the regional markets are doing the same as they launch 5G. They are using the fixed wireless access solutions to accelerate the uh, availability of home broadband uh, in, in, in their respective countries. So it will not only expand the availability of 5G in urban areas, but also in rural areas where rolling out the fiber is a big challenge and it involves a huge capex and operating cost. So it will also save 
the company a bit of a capex uh, uh, and, and operating cost because they won't have to uh, maybe roll out uh, fiber uh, so aggressively and may rely on a, a geo air fiber or a 5G fixed wireless solution. So we have seen uh, both uh, uh, Bharti and, and Geo so far have only six to 10 million uh, home broadband customers. So their target of 200 million looks, definitely looks quite ambitious. But uh, I mean, in our forecast, we obviously will be cons conservative and we'll be building a smaller edition of home broadband. But this will definitely, you know, accelerate the market in terms of uh, home broadband editions. Okay, so that is on uh, GOF fiber, right? Uh, I want to talk a little bit more at length about the artificial intelligence, uh, you know, move. I mean, there was a lot of focus on it. And Sanjay, I want to come to you on this. Uh, the company plans to create up to 2000 megawatts of AI ready computing capacity across both their cloud and edge locations. So they're going big in this space. How do you think this will impact the incumbent players? Who gets hurt the most? Who benefits? Uh, your thoughts? You know, um, uh, technologies like um, uh, AI are a given now, and they are cutting across uh, sectors. Even the non-technology uh, sectors have to consider AI very seriously and to uh, really make uh, some business sense out of this. Uh, the challenge is that uh, when you compete in a market, uh, for customer perception and customer experience. How will all this translate into a better experience will decide the winners, right? To have internal measures, of course, will bring your indices to look better internally because your hit rates will improve. Your content will juice uh, more value for what you've invested into. So internally, you look better. But from a customer perception perspective, how does this translate into a better customer experience is what will determine the winner. That it can be very effective, that it can be a differentiator in my mind is given. But, um, you know, the real uh, uh, test, which is the asset test where the customer says, ah, my life has changed and it looks much better than yesterday. I think that is that is yet to be discovered. Hmm. Um, so, you, you know, Nitin, I wanted to come to you on uh, the enterprise connectivity business that they're looking to build, right? Um, that will, they want to mirror the scale of their consumer business in enterprise connectivity as well. How are you reading into that and what kind of potential do you see there? Yeah, so absolutely, I think artificial intelligence and, and machine learning and this 5G ecosystem will first, in, in, our, in my view, will touch the enterprise sector much more than and then on the retail side. So, and with the partnership with all these cloud platform companies like Google and Amazon, Reliance will probably make uh, available uh, the artificial intelligence to the startups and the small and medium term enterprises in India. And this, I think that the growth is, is going to be phenomenal and huge, but it's going to be very gradual and it's a long term trend in India. And I think in our view, there are three sectors where AI can play a very important role uh, in the Indian context, which are healthcare, agriculture, and education. So these are the three sectors which we believe will see a very early uh, a touch point in terms of AI and, and machine learning. All right, uh, <clears throat> gentlemen, it's a pleasure having you with us here. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, Nitin and Sanjay, appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18 as always and uh, good insights. Well, you know, the, you got the market which is up 